gosh. Okay, hello, hi, my name is Rachel. Today we are going to talk about <sighs> mermaid anatomy. Under the sea. Under the sea. So here's what happened. Last year I read a bad mermaid book. Not a bad, it's not bad, it wasn't good. It wasn't necessarily bad. It just was not good. Um, and I have trouble finding good mermaid books that are not middle grade. Middle grade, fine, but I want like, I want something dark and uh, scary and also maybe a little bit of romance, maybe a little bit of sapphic vibes, maybe a little bit of who knows. And I have read too many bad mermaid books, too many at this point. Um, this one, which I got for free on Kindle Unlimited and read in one sitting next to a beach and was like, wow, that was terrible. But uh, the bagel I was eating while reading it was delicious. So I like couldn't really be as mad as I normally would. Uh, side note, I fucking and then last year I read To Kill a Kingdom and it just was not good. Like had such a cool idea, Mermaid has to um, ha ha uh, like, take hearts from men. Um, and then she like stashes them, little, little, tucks them away in little crannies uh, in her floor under the sea. Under the sea. Well, um, I just, it just got so stupid so quickly and ended so so stupidly and I read it for a book club and um, I didn't even go on to talk about it in the book club and I'm glad because all I would have said was this was um, stupid and I am now stupider for having read this. So last year I was like okay okay it's time for me to find some good mermaid books maybe I'll find one if I go like off the beaten path. So I like dove through the waters <laughs> of uh, mermaid book lists online and I found one that I had never heard anybody talk about before. I found some others that I had heard people talk about before but I was like maybe I have found the hidden gem maybe I have found the one the only the goodest of the goodest mermaid books that is 100% not what happened instead I now have a DNF review for you today I'm here to tell you what I um, took away from the perfect waters book one by Alicia McCoy and I just want to say nothing against the author of this nothing against her in fact I actually think that um, should I have finished this I might have given it two and a half stars which is not a bad rating so this is the first in a three book series by the author um, it is available <laughs> I think on Kindle Unlimited um, and it oh oh boy where to begin let's start with the cover shall we the perfect waters to save himself he must save her and she must become dot 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 book one man uh, and so this is the first in three books of what is labeled on the top as an african-american mermaid paranormal so I thought this was going to be like paranormal fantasy which in my experience is typically like 60% romance 40% plot now the plot is not always good but I was hoping it would be because the synopsis sounded really cool. A prince, a thousand year old blue whale, and a, the race against time to find the single most important thing to the water's survival. For the waters to be perfect, an Odessa must connect to all life within them, and if the reigning Odessa loses her life, her sorcery is always passed to her firstborn daughter. Only the daughter the waters know of is not the first. Asia's mother went missing 18 years ago, and since then, Asia has feared the one thing she always dreamt of working with the ocean. So instead, she's been living life as a lab tech. She doesn't exactly love her job, but it pays the bills and she has money to spend on nights out with her girls. However, her most recent night out ends with her gaining markings on her skin and losing body parts, dot, dot, dot. That is not exactly how I would describe that scene of the book, which is the scene where I was like, oh, oh no. Prince Zale is son to Emperor... <sighs> can't read words. Emperor Ecthelion and Empress Oceane. They rule Oceellus, I think is how it was pronounced in the book, also known as the Royal Waters. News quickly arrives of Omarilla, the original Odessa, Asia's mother. Murder and the waters become a state of panic. Daria, the daughter of Omarilla, arrives in Oceellus to take her position as Odessa, but unawares to anyone, she is not the firstborn daughter. A single member of royalty and princess what? And Priestess Noelani are always pulled to the next Odessa, but so are the murky sea witches who use hounds, not literal dogs, to do their dirty work. So with a woman up on land unawares to how important she is, the hunt for her begins before she gets into the wrong hands. Who will find her first? And will Asia be able to claim, and will Asia be able to find the one thing she needs in order to claim her sorcery so she can make the waters perfect again? Okay, so um, I did go through the, the reviews of this and it has 
good, mostly good reviews. So it only has 262 ratings at this point, but it has a 4.64 on Goodreads. So I'm thinking this is it. This is a diamond in the rough. I'm so excited. I'm finally going to find like a cool mermaid fantasy, paranormal, a romance. It sounds so good. And... <laughs> Here's what happens. Right off the bat, we are um, introduced to Omarilla, who is dying. She's Asia's mother. Um, so she left her daughter on land and went down to the sea to become the next Odessa, who is like, you know, in charge of all life. And you know, if the oceans were to die, we were to die. So she's like in charge basically of keeping the whole world alive, right, from the ocean. Okay, cool idea, like it. Don't love the execution at the beginning of the book. Rough start, it was fine, we can move on. Then the next thing we have is Asia's POV and so she she is you know talking about how she's going out with girls and she doesn't really like her job and my sister's calling me. Hey, yeah, sorry, um, we were just looking at Sorry, we had to talk about boring investment shit because you know have to plan for the future unless the communist revolution comes so <laughs> she's talking about how she doesn't like her job she's a lab tech she's also talking about how she really fears the ocean so a problem that i find with this is like in outside of the obvious issue that i have with this book is sort of like continuity things so apparently she was really interested in um oceanography but that never really like came out in the book and I did read 65% of this before DNFing. So I feel like I got a good chunk of time with Asia to find out like how much she really knew about the ocean, how much she really loved it. What the f So <laughs> continuity things like that, like her lack of actual, you know, knowledge of oceanography, which she went to college for, or marine biology, I don't know. I'm not a scientist, I'm just book review what so <laughs> and then also like her fear of the ocean immediately leaves um and then we don't talk about that again because what happens is she you know leaves work she hates her job she goes out with the girls and she's talking about how um you know that she's gonna hook up with this guy that she typically hooks up with i will say this book was very sex positive which i appreciated um and it even talks about stuff like this guy like he's really cute and you know we are like sexually compatible although you know i can like orgasm better on my own. I think that that's great to have those conversations in books. Well then, as soon as they started to actually have sex, this is where the book took a um, abrupt uh, U-turn to hell. Oh, it smells like garlic in here. My husband's cooking. <laughs> I know he loves messing with me even if he does see other women. That doesn't bother me no, cause we ain't nothing serious. He says my pussy makes his dick feel a kind of way when he's inside of me, but won't say exactly what. So she is like a magic pussy I guess? <laughs> and then they're, you know, having sex, that's fine. Um, it's pretty, you know, like uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, saying shit, fuck, you know, lots of swearing and um, lots of use of the word pussy, which let me just talk about that real quick. I am very picky about sex scenes. I don't hate a erotica. I don't read a lot of erotica, but I don't mind it as well as it's not written in a way that makes me laugh. <laughs> If you use the word pussy, I'm gonna laugh. I'm sorry. I just, I don't find that, that word is, I have a lot of like not good feelings about that word in general because mostly it's used in a, like a derogatory sense. So I feel like I just don't like it. I don't like it. I don't know what word I would prefer to her to have used instead. I really don't know, but not that. I also will say that another person who writes sex scenes that I don't like because of the verbiage used is Sarah J Mass. I hate her sex scenes. I hate Hate, hate them not just because they are completely copy pasted one after the other like they're the same scene she just switches sentences around and it's all the same shit it's the same apex of her thighs bundle of nerves I don't like it just say clit okay so they're having sex and she says I suddenly feel the water at my feet they're having sex on the beach by the way and gasp remember she's afraid of the ocean he says fuck he shouts but not in a good way he shouts in pain my body shivers and I scramble away from him getting to my feet or feeling before turning around. The fuck was that? He spits. He's still on his knees, but the rubber is now on his jacket and not on his dick that's still hard. For some reason, I can see him crystal clear now. My pussy just pushed him out. What the hell? What the hell indeed? What the hell was that? What the hell did you just write? Did you actually just write those words and think, yeah, it's good? No, no, 
There was no reason, no reason for this. I frown and reach a hand between my legs to touch myself. I scream. Trent gets to his feet and stares at me like I've got two heads. What the fuck is wrong with you? My pussy's gone. I feel a long flat slit where my labia used to be. No clit, no lips, nothing. And it's higher up too, more flat against me. What the fuck is wrong with me? So she says, I gotta go and she runs away. <laughs> Um, here's the thing. She thinks that she's drugged, right? She thinks somebody spiked her drink. And she's like hallucinating this. So she goes home and then she wakes up the next day on the floor and she's like, oh my God, my pussy's still gone. And she just, it, the, <laughs> first of all, there was no reason for it to be written this way at all. But then we fixate on the pussy being gone. Like we just fixate on the pussy having disappeared. My pussy disappeared. There's a slit where my pussy used to be. Am I dying? I feel around in my ass and I realize my asshole is gone too. Just a tiny single line remains. How the hell am I meant to shit? I I don't know, nor do I care. Here's the thing. I used to say, and I think I said this m m many, many times, I, I just want to know like how Edward Cullen gets a boner. Like I feel like, I felt like Stephanie Meyer owed us enough to explain the anatomy of vampire dicks. How the fuck do they possibly work without blood flow? How? 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 Stephanie, how? I apologize to Stephanie Meyer for this one singular thing for the rest of her behavior, fuck her. But for this one singular thing, I apologize because I no longer want that. I I, re I reverse that. I do not want that. I regret having asked for that because I feel like that manifested into me reading this book. I don't want to know uh, details about anatomy anymore. I no longer want to take anatomy classes in my fiction. No thank you. Bye. I hate it. I want to be dead. Again, this just keeps getting brought up over and over and over and over over and over and over again. She just keep like, keep saying, my pussy's gone, my pussy's gone. Oh my God, I don't have an asshole anymore. How am I gonna shit? Then she starts to crave raw bronze and shrimp and mussels and things like that, which that was kind of, kind of like horror filmy to me. But I kind of dug it. Like I kind of like being grossed out in that way. The anatomy though, too much. If it was just once, I would have been like, that was kind of weird. Screenshotted it, sent it to my friends, moved on, read this, gave it three stars and never thought about it again. Unfortunately, I will never forget the day that that I was enamored, not enamored, the day that I was inundated with mermussy, mermaid pussy. I feel like that guy in the film, The Fly, even my pussy fell off like his dick dis did or disappeared. Same shit. It still ain't back and I'm too scared to poke around with it and to find out if my clit is in there somewhere. It pushed Trent's dick out so maybe it would swallow my finger or bite it off or something. <laughs> Why do you have to do this? I haven't even been to the toilet since this shit happened to me. I sat on it for a good 20 minutes last night trying to go, but I couldn't squeeze out a drop of anything. I've eaten all the shellfish and drunk almost all the water I bought too. So why don't I need to go? I don't know, nor do I care, nor do I care. Listen, I want to normalize periods in fantasy. I don't need to know that you can't shit. I don't need to know that. There's a line and I draw it there. I don't want to know about your toilet habits. The slit in my ass is so small, I don't even think it's possible for anything to come out or go in it anymore anyways. Surely I'm gonna get sick eating and drinking and not getting rid of anything. What if I'm gonna die? I love how she's like, <laughs> possible for anything to go out or go in. Her mom before she died had sent a fish uh, to relay a message for her. So she goes to the ocean and the, the fish is like, I have to swim into your palm. She's like, oh, I'm scared of the ocean though. My stomach knots, the last time the water touched me, my pussy disappeared. Again, I do not need a reminder of what happened. You said it like five to six times. What if my tits are next? What if? <laughs> what if? I'm scared of the water, I whisper. I'm talking to fish now? So this fish relays this message from uh, from Asia's mom and she says that um, the witches are, are after her, that they'll send hounds after her. Now, quick side note. This book actually has good ideas. <laughs> so I think that this book, this book should have been two different books because on the one hand, the author has a really cool, really original ideas that I was really interested in. Um, the problem is that she also wanted to write like an erotica book and she kind of just mishmashed them together and um, it's not that erotica is bad and it's not that paranormal fantasy romance is bad it's that in this case she took two things that on their own are good but then they don't work together so like her ideas are like a chocolate milkshake and ranch dressing it's not meshing it, it turned out bad it's a bad idea we shouldn't have done this because on the one hand, the world she's created is actually really fucking cool. And she has really cool and original ideas that I was really interested in. So for one thing, under the water, there are obviously, you know, all these oceans that we have. This is set in our world. And she created this system of like these doorways that they travel through and like fish are in charge of them. That was really cool. Another thing I really loved was that their priestess, the, 
that was this blue whale named Noalani who is like a thousand years old and she lives in this coral reef and she can't leave because if she were to leave it would rupture this coral reef and it would wreak havoc on the world. That's really fucking cool. Like when's the last time you saw a blue whale as a main character in a fantasy? You don't. And that's a really cool and a real general idea. Another thing is that she created all this lore with these witches who are the bad guys uh, and the witches took um, like mer people blood and shark blood and created these beings called hounds and they do the hunting for the witches so these hounds like there are some after Asia trying to find her and kill her because the witches want to be in charge of the ocean rather than having an Odessa be in charge of the ocean so all of that is really fucking cool right like all of that is is awesome and I would love to have had all of that explored also there's like this element where it's almost like a forbidden romance where typically a prince is not the person who an Odessa is supposed to be with um, but he gets told that he's like you have to be with her it's like foretold and he's like oh this is kind of against my religion but and it's uh, or not against their religion but like the law but the law is kind of their religion and it, that's like a forbidden element so that's cool the problem is that there was so much pussy disappearing description and like her wondering how her her pussy worked and saying the word pussy all the time so like we saw a lot more wondering about her pussy and how it worked and her ass and how that worked with her not shitting anymore than we saw of the cool ideas like the priestess Noelani and the hounds even though you get POVs from the hounds you hear mo way more about Asia's pussy and I don't want to know so like she's talking to the prince Zale and they are very attracted to each other which is fine it's kind of you know like insta lovey but it's fine it's fine like I could have let that go but she says <laughs> I suck in lungs full of water. If I still had a pussy, it would be definitely wet right now. Telling you a pussy though, Zale doesn't even have a dick. He's just got a slit like me. Can we even have sex anymore? What if we can't? Another really cool thing is that um, the Odessa's as well as the royalty in the mer people have markings all over them. You can kind of see it in the cover um, and they all mean different things. And I think that that was really a cool idea. Like again, there was all of this lore that she created in this book that was like really fucking smart. And I, I would have like actually liked it to see more of like should could the writing have used a little polishing beyond the you know non-stop pussy talk yeah sure but like the idea is like the the raw the raw footage was there it was there uh, he says her name for the first time and um, she said my gills start tingling and I gasp before I swim around him what the fuck is that do I fuck through my gills now is that what this is do I get gill flutters instead of pussy ones <laughs> Again, she is uh, wondering about her, her pussy, um, and she says, <laughs> I look down at, I wonder if male merms hide their dicks in their slits. I look down at mine and see it's barely noticeable because of my scales, but it is there. My tail kind of dips around it too, but apart from the hint of it being there, it's completely flush against my body. Definitely no, no lips. So what's hiding in mine? Oh, I don't want to know. Please don't tell me. Does that mean I didn't lose my pussy and it's just hidden? Will it come out like a sea anemone? I wish a sea anemone would come take me out right now. Bloom like a flower and pop my clit out? I shudder. That shit sounds fucked up, but also exciting as hell. That makes one of us. So um, then they're like, so um, then they're boning. <laughs> Um, at uh, later in the book um, and it's like super intense and um, he smells like cotton candy throughout the whole book which is weird and apparently when he's having sex the cotton candy scent intensifies which is objectively hilarious. <laughs> Ooh cotton candy. When you're aroused and wish to be entered only then will you open. My slit begins to open up and I watch Naw as my pussy appears flowering just like an anemone at the corals. He holds my other hip to steady me and then strokes my fingertips all the way through my pussy. Oh fuck, I'm so wet, but I can't read this. <laughs> but it feels a lot silkier than my usual arousal. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. I arch my back against him and close my eyes. He pushes his fingers in between each of mine and repeats, pulling in a sharp breath himself when I feel a tingle as we both touch me this time. So much essence. Please don't call it that. And then while they're doing it, he says, fuck Asia, you are light. Okay. 
So there's a lot of like stroking hip gills um, and they don't actually like he doesn't actually like uh, put his mer dick in her mermussy because um, of reasons. He's like there's so much I want to do to you but I can't because once we start it'll last longer than the time we have. If I let go I wouldn't be able to stop myself from getting inside you. Merm dicks have a whole mind of their own. So merm dicks have a whole mind of their own. There's so much about mer people anatomy that I did not ever want or need to know. Um, and I wish that I could get inside of my brain and just scrub this out. I really do. But instead, I'm doing this. So the ad revenue better be worth it. Why do I find that exciting? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know why you do. So uh, that they don't end up. So what did we learn? Um, we learned that I have no interest in uh, mermaid anatomy and that from now on we do not go and find books of off the beaten path paranormal romances hoping that they'll be a diamond in the rough because instead they're just the shit in the toilet. <laughs> But not from mermaids, because apparently mermaids do not shit from their ass slits. God, if I never see the word slit again, it will be too soon. So I DNF this at 65%. I don't recommend it unless you want to laugh. Like I said, the lore is actually pretty cool. It's just that it's t overtaken by just you being absolutely slammed over the head by the word pussy and wondering why her pussy disappears until she realizes, oh, my pussy didn't disappear. It's just inside and eventually it will flower out like an anemone. I didn't need to know any of that. Like you could have just not had the wondering. You could have just had her be like, oh, I'm gonna go skinny dip with my friend friends and then the next day she wakes up and she's like oh something weird is happening down there and she's like oh I, I also have like gills and scales and my anatomy is different like that would have been fine <laughs> And, and then like sex scenes, sure, yeah, nothing wrong with that. Um, It's just that the word pussy, I didn't need to hear it 50,000 times. <laughs> and I don't really need to hear the word slit either. Um, I just feel like synonyms exist and I wish that she would have used them because I just was dying and and my eyes were bleeding. Um, So thanks, I hate it and uh, never again. I will not be continuing this series, obviously. Anyways, let me know your thoughts below on Mermussy, uh, and if you have any actually good mermaid book recommendations, I'm obviously still looking. So, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!